the biological or immunological effects of the complement system are as same as we have discussed when we talked about its function. Let's revise them again and tie up some loose ends. You may be thinking, what about the small inactive fragments of the complementary protein? What do they do in the complement system? Well, as mentioned before, they are anaphylatoxins and chemotaxins. Anaphylatoxins are the peptide fragments that trigger the degranulation of endothelial cells, mast cells, and basophils. They release pro-inflammatory molecules, such as histamine and heparin. This produces a local inflammatory response. Chemotaxins are the substances that stimulate the movement of white blood cells, free radicals, and lysosomal enzymes to the area of infection or injury. In the case of the complement system, they enhance the effect of anaphylatoxins. By signaling the neutrophils, eosinophils, dendritic cells, and macrophages to the site of inflammation. As for the regulation of the complement system, there are many factors that can affect the regulation. We will talk about the five important ones here. Antigen antibody complex. C1 esterase inhibitors. Factor H and then factor I propertin or factor P. Decay accelerating factor. Regulatory components can be divided into stimulators and inhibitors. The antigen antibody complex is a part of the classical pathway. It is a stimulant that starts the classical pathway. If there is no antigen antibody complex, the pathway is inhibited. Propertin or factor P is a part of the alternative pathway. It propels the pathway forwards by attaching with C3BBB to form C3BBBP that starts the amplification loop. C1 esterase inhibitor is also part of the classical pathway. It inactivated the C1R and C1S proteases. It can be overwhelmed if the concentration of C1E increases and it becomes abundant in the bloodstream to the point that C1 esterase cannot control it. In the alternative pathway, the C1 inhibitor dissociates factor BB from C3B, thus C3 convertase is shutdowns. Factor H, which acts as a cofactor for factor I, they are part of the alternative pathway. Factor H breaks C3B into inactive fragments. Factor H fails to regulate the complement system if the concentration of C3B in the bloodstream is increased that is factor H and I become overwhelmed. Factor I catalyzes the cleavage of C3B at multiple sites. The decay accelerating factor is an inhibitor that protects your own cells from getting destroyed by the complement. This is done by inhibiting the formation of C3 and C5 convertase. DAF inhibits the binding of C2 to C4B and promotes the dissociation of existing C4B2A complexes. Complement receptor CR1 has similar effects as DAF. The clinical manifestation result from either underproduction of the complement proteins or overconsumption. One of them is called hypocomplementemia, hereditary angioedema, HE. Congenital C1 inhibitor deficiency leads to chronic and spontaneous complement activation, which manifests as severe and recurrent episodes of edema called angoneurotic edema. In the case, of early complement deficiency, that is C1 to C4, the common pathologies are ENT and lung infection, lupus-like illness, chronic renal disease, and repeated infections. In case of a late complement deficiency, that is C5 to C8, C5-C8, incidence of Neisseria infection increases, such as gonorrhea and meningitis. The deficiency of C9 does not manifest as pathology, even though it is a part of the membrane attack complex. That is all about the complement system, its pathways of activation, effects, and regulators. Stay tuned to scotia.com for more knowledge-filled videos.